<laughs> and so I wrote him back. Oh, and I said, what kind of a person would you think I was if I changed my politics just to get your donations? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, isn't that like the Welcome again to Making Comics, the podcast about making comics. Today we have special guests again, the second time, for Ethan Nicole and Doug Tenapel. The thing that I'm so blown away with your stuff compared to a lot of other comic artists is a lot of comic artists, you know, work on one property forever, yeah. you know? And, and I think a lot of the reason why I'm like, I'm done with Remind, I'm going to move on to my next one, then my next one, then my next yeah. one, is because just seeing how, you know, the footprint of your books, um, it's, it's, I don't know, I don't know many other graphic novels who can have that lineup of all different yeah. worlds. I don't know of another author who does that. But it, uh, for me, it's not, it may not be so noble because I do love creativity and I love creating the worlds and creating the character stuff, but I kind of get, uh, I don't know about unsatisfied, but just bored with my own worlds so that once I've created it, I, I would like to stay there and tell more stories. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like, uh, that one's done. Yeah. Uh, wow, I've never thought of this over here. Look at this <laughs> over here, man. Yeah. Shiny new object. Yeah. And and it's so fun to create, and it feels mm-hmm. like I'm always improving so much on my last one. That um. And you know, in Axe Cop, he's created more worlds in one issue of Axe Cop <laughs> than I have in all yeah. thirteen of my graphic <laughs> novels. Anyway, he's created more characters. Yeah. <clears throat> But see, that's why Ethan and I are best buds, because he's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> he just likes to sit around and praise him all the time. Dude, uh, you're so cool. He never, he never so, ever tells me that. It is, it is, I would never be as It was a weird team. morphing from, because I was like <clears throat> his like hovering fan. Yeah. So how long have you guys known each other? It was when Creature Tech really was really when I found you. Yeah, 2000. 2003? 2003 or 2002, yeah. somewhere in there. It was that Comic Con. I went to that Comic Con with this like mission. Did we tell this last story last time? Probably. I think, I think so. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. I probably told it last time. How you guys met? Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, it's like, but it is. It's a weird like, it's a weird transition from like fan to, mm. yeah. like when I moved to LA, I remember being like, yeah. feeling like uh, I didn't have any friends. Yeah here hardly and, and um doug kept inviting me over and i kept feeling like i was invading him like this is like <laughs> doug to naples house you know yeah. like he's got stuff to do you know he's he's busy and uh then i started to realize as i lived here that like he's he doesn't not have busy. a lot of friends yeah well, <laughs> i mean just like he has a lot of guys in his life like you know we don't you yeah. know so, we relate not to each other i do not hang out with level, fans you know? yeah. That way. yeah and uh <laughs> yeah fyi I don't know. <laughs> it's funny. It was, yeah, it's funny. Almost like uh, you know, there's some days where it felt like you're almost like begging me to hang out, and I was like, yeah. busy. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guy. Come on. <laughs> oh, just, just come smoke a cigar. I'm like, oh, I mean, again. <laughs> I got I got stuff to do, man. <laughs> well, but I have that same. I have a, a you know all our guy friends that are in the business. Yeah. Um, we're friends with uh, Scott Derrickson. He just directed Sinister. Uh, Mike Nelson is a good buddy of ours as the Rift Tracks Mystery Science Theater stuff um, Cliff Cramp you know is a professor out of Fullerton State these are different levels of industry musicians his roommate's a musician he's a I mean Phillips are one of my best friends too his mm-hmm. roommate because Ethan starts dating this girl so now I've no one to hang out with so now <laughs> Philip comes over he's my running partner <laughs> And uh, I bequeath my newts to him, so he's taking care of my newts in his house. Now. Literal newts, not his comic. The oh, actual yeah. pet newts. Oh, the newts, actual newts. And um, you, you start to um, all these people are. You know, I'm as much a fan of their work as mm-hmm. they are of mine, and and yet the the work while we talk about work because men talk about work it's not a pr- I, I don't praise each other's work I'm not amazed at what you do at DreamWorks but I love that you have a job I mean it's, that's normal you could be at a you could be an auto mechanic and it would be it wouldn't be like well that's you know I have no interest in how that's done I would just go like really like 
how does the garage work and what are your hours and what's your work ethic and what do you how do you get an order to fix whatever mm. so it's kind of like our interest in each other's work is we're we're fans but that as soon as you find out about the person it's like the work just quickly mm. goes away mm-hmm. and suddenly yeah. it's like who's your dad where you're from what's that like yeah and I mean I never when I hang with Mike Nelson I never talk to him about uh, his work hardly ever mm-hmm. other than from a business side like how does the internet side of it work and how's your charging work mm-hmm. and stuff like that and we talk about our writing ethic and stuff well that's the best thing like I think for me about you and Mike mm-hmm. probably my favorite thing about the two of you is like when you're just a fan of these guys you have this image in your head of how great of a guy they're going to be mm-hmm. and they actually like exceed that in ways you wouldn't have thought of oh, <laughs> they're just great they're, and, and it's not even the way like you thought like oh I'd love to sit and talk about his characters or like oh Mike yeah, I'd love to uh, sit yeah. and talk about bad movies I've seen that he should but it's not that it's like I talk to these guys about like my relationship and like about life yeah. like these guys are like genuinely like these guys are men that I aspire to be like yeah. you know so and in that, but in that sense you're not a fan because no one talks to their fans about that stuff mm-hmm. yeah. so that's what that's mm-hmm. what I know like that's what's so weird is as soon as if if he if he continued to be a fan and could never get out of that mm-hmm. then there would be no friendship yeah mm-hmm. so it's like the friendship comes because of kind of how mm-hmm. he uh carried himself was as a different kind of person than a, so he didn't, he didn't act like a fan it, it, it never felt like you were befriending a fan yeah i was mm-hmm. never i never walked up and talked to people as a fan of very much yeah. doug i just always i don't know there's just so I feel like I, I, feel like I had to get to know. Yeah, there's a definitely a kindred spirit thing there. Well, and you know, I introduced you to that other guy at DreamWorks the other day. You know, yeah. Who you work with? And I was going to ask you who he was, and he's another I animator his name there. Was again and just, because I don't remember names at all. <laughs> he's a. I'll, I'll tell you off the air. Yeah, but he's yeah. a. He's an old friend of not an old friend, but he's an old fan of mine. So he, mm. but but he's a good good guy, and uh, I just thought. Oh, you know what? These two guys need to know each other yeah. at this studio because yeah. I think they'd really get along well. Yeah, I'll have to. I want to get his name because I want to so, have coffee yeah. with him and say, "What are you about?" Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Tell me the big picture. And that's what I mean. Is I meet these guys at the studio, and I know that your departments don't talk to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'll go work mm-hmm. at this department on this movie, and I'll go and talk to other people on the studio about it and say like, "Oh, and I'm on this movie." Da da da, and they'll go like. Uh, is that still being worked on? What is that? I'm like, you don't know about your own movie here? Yeah. Or I'll walk down the halls and there'll be like movies I've never even seen or heard of yeah. there and like they're early in development or abandoned or whatever. Yeah. And I just realized like none of these departments talk to each other. None of these people. Yeah. And even the <laughs> departments within the movies yeah. hardly talk to yeah. each other. Yeah. <laughs> I was eating lunch with uh, with Phil Craven, mm-hmm. my story boss. <laughs> And uh, uh, a kid who had recognized me came up and criticized the movie that he was working on. <laughs> okay. The, 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 the <laughs> Phil's the head of story on. And so he didn't know. That so he was. worked at DreamWorks and didn't know Phil was the head of story. Oh, and I'm just going like, oh my gosh. Oh <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going, it's weird. The campus is just uh, yeah. weird, you know? Yeah. I mean, neat, I'm just saying, but. Uh, you guys all need to talk to each other more because there's, <laughs> there's people there that would really have fun and get along if they were there. Yeah. I'm a socialite. Bear <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else there to say like, except that I'm just still doing it. Still doing it? Um, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Like every page is so much work. <laughs> but I think I'm just accepting that. Mm-hmm. that I have to work <laughs> on my comic. It's the comic that doesn't make any money. Yeah. <laughs> but I put like. <laughs> what is that sound? What? That's a bear! Oh, that is a pig. <laughs> That's a pig? Monster pig. <laughs> That's a pig. <laughs> Slow motion pig. <laughs> Drunk so, um, so it is a lot of work because you have well yeah I think it is it's kind of my comic that like X-Cop I do like try to crank it out in Bear Mageddon I 
I just take my time on it. I think that's what I'm not getting making money on it really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just like a it's it is it's fun to like I want it to be epic and cinematic and like bears are a lot of work to draw. They can yeah. see Kildur, that character. He's like yeah. so freaking furry and like <laughs> he's so hard to draw. Like, yeah. I mean, he's just not. He's just a hard. He's a work. You know. Yeah. Um. And mind. then I'm doing like this, the scene that I'm doing right now that's gonna coming up in the book is like it's a bridge with like piled up wrecked cars all over the bridge <laughs> and bears and like right. every single image is like so much work. Just so, so I asked you the other day, why not just uh, why not just make it all cartoony? Big deal. One thing I already started it not cartoony, so they were pretty switch cartoony. But the other reason was because <laughs> that's why. I, it's just the visual that I want. Like I want it to feel cinematic and, and, right. and I want I want that for it. Like, you said something like that. It was like the horror of it seemed more real. It was more realistic. Yeah, and it yeah. had more mm-hmm. kind of impact. Yeah. Whereas cartoon, it would take away. And some I don't know of exactly why I like having my like it just works to me. And I don't know if you guys think it's weird or not, but it works to me to have like I like the bears having that more real look, but my characters are more cartoony. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it totally works. Because it makes and then, but then Dickinson Kilder's a little bit less cartoony. You think he's like a because di- he, he's almost a different style. No, he looks cartoony to me too. I think they all look pretty cartoony. But you're right about the bears and the bears. It makes them look. It reminds me almost of like them, which is kind of the bug movie. You know, mm-hmm. where they're more like insects, like non-negotiable things. And there's a there's a moment where you talk about it in the story. It's a ways down, mm-hmm. where the one bear is talking or whatever, and just. That is more horrifying and amazing coming out of kind of a head, real bear's that idea. Dead head, yeah, <laughs> face is just more. Yeah, if it looks cartoony. Right. It must be. It it also t- show it lets you know it's a it's a, it's a horror story rather than or a monster story rather than because they're lifeless looking like not like or soulless like an animal. Yeah, looks like it's it's not like. Struggling yeah. with its nature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. animals just <clears throat> obey their nature. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're not like humans. <laughs> well, like I'm working on that uh, Sterling the Unicorn thing, and I've tried doing kind of a design of the character for an animated short that we're, we might be doing. Mm-hmm. And they asked me like, to design the character, and my initial thought was, oh, give him the normal horse eye. And anytime you do a horse with that eye, it's just dead. There's no life to it. And as soon as you see the horse in like, Tangled, mm-hmm. you know the eyes or whatever. It's like, oh, it's a character, yeah. mm-hmm. and so you can't do a horse's yeah. dead horse eye right. and have it. Like even when I, you can see the bear's pupils, it starts to make them look a yeah. little too. Have you seen Madagascar Three? Not that no. I'm <laughs> pimping my own <laughs> studio's movies, but there's the my favorite character is this bear. Yeah, yeah, this bear in it that the rainbow wigs that one of <laughs> one of the characters falls in love with, and the bear just has normal bear eyes. And so there's never any expression. It's just like, ah, <laughs> and it's <laughs> that's, that's like why it works so well because everything else in DreamWorks is like overly expressive. Yeah. And so this bears is kind of like, ah, like why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite part. <clears throat> yeah, Go see I, that movie I'm so I can get a bonus. <laughs> did you, you work did on that not one? Say no. That. Oh, okay. <laughs> you did not just say that. <laughs> you agree though, right? No comments. That's a yes. I can't believe you just said that to people. I can edit it out. We're professional (laughs) artists here. Please do. (laughs) I liked it. I I love the um the last post on Bear McGinn where where you had the (laughs) the 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 comment about the the girl got everybody a little. I don't didn't read any of the comments after yeah. that. I'm sure oh, people got heated about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. It could have been a lot worse. It was no. It was no rat fist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing compares to that. But I mean, yeah, that was bad. Yeah, I just. Uh, you said that women really shouldn't have a vote. valid point about my character, and that's that. Like, <laughs> yeah, really, all you've seen of my, you said my women female character. Be able to vote. Whatever. Oh, <laughs> Uh, I just have a female character that all you've really seen or ha- have happened to her is like blood keeps getting splattered in her face and she's going ew ah, ah. and she's just like a tree hugger yeah and so she is really one dimensional at this point and I think I, I didn't set out to write a book about a girl like she really is like in a way I want her to be like I, I wanted the audience to be like why is why is, is this guy going for her because I think that that happens a lot mm-hmm. like guys go for girls that there's no like why? <laughs> that they shouldn't. Yeah, but it's just for some reason he sees it. Yeah, 
And I think that I, I want to like explore that. Like, I want I want her to change a bit, but it's more about Joel changing. Yeah. Um, but that is like the challenge of like writing that I'm running into and realizing like if you don't really think about who your character is and why they're doing it, yeah, they become very one dimensional and yeah. like yeah. yeah, yeah, predictable and yeah. not fun to read. And yeah. so I think yeah. that there are the characters that are much more a part of me is in them mm-hmm. that are more fun for me to write. Yeah, but definitely Andrea is probably one of the weakest characters for me because I. Just, <laughs> yeah. But I was just having fun with that, like, the idea that, like, it was so offensive that Andrea's reaction to getting bear blood in her face was to be grossed <laughs> out, and then to wipe her face with a dead rabbit that has poop on it, it was like, that's pretty gross. <laughs> like, I think any what? woman would react. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a long story. Yeah. <laughs> I have no, no, got, I no have comment. nothing to do with no, this. this one was no. all me. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Now, when, when I was reading your post about that, <laughs> mm-hmm. I was... I was, um, it's not something, I guess I would say, it's not something that I would write about, like, because I knew it would stir up more controversy, yeah. Yeah. and um, yeah, I noticed did. that you and Doug, or not you as much, but Doug, Doug's pretty good at stirring up controversy. <laughs> yeah, did you, did you, you know? <laughs> it's a little bit. And, and every um, time I open my mouth, I just started doing this. I'm thing. amazed at what people come up with. <laughs> like, I actually had a person on there say that, like, you know this. You sick. You've turned your fan base against this defenseless woman, and you know <laughs> this kind of stuff leads to rape threats. Like, what? oh no! I mean, oh. literally because I, I wrote a blog. Oh my and I, gosh! Wow. Yeah. I mean, just the just the ex- extreme things people say on the internet is yeah. just so yeah. silly. Yeah. So I think you, you have to. I think I think the art of interneting is like for one thing. I probably shouldn't have done that blog post, but I think yeah. it was like, yeah. That's what I learned too. Is like I'm I'm so bad. But then at the same time, like it's the highest track of traffic that I've had yeah, this month. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's kind of where I was. It's your only with. shot at money. It's yeah. controversy. <laughs> so maybe just the right amount of controversy is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of my was my where I was going with it. Is like I don't like stirring up that partially because I don't want to get all like oh I gotta respond to this you know yeah and that's and, the thing you have to gets, resist like it, it, I didn't crazy. even read all the comments I yeah. usually would read all and like get all into like responding to every one of them yeah. and I'm just not gonna do that yeah. this time. and and all the stuff I've had the most controversy about on my blogs a lot of times I would shut it down like immediately and delete comments where yeah. it caused the controversy but then my traffic is just like oh, it goes down you know mm-hmm. because people are kind of offended by that too that I would remove their comments but yeah. you know, people are it's people are they, they're line. like professionally offended. It's like yeah. they're they're good at getting offended, especially this yeah. cult, our it's, culture. The, it's yeah. become this new hobby, and there's this it in the web community. They want everything to change right now. It's like you will respond to this. I'm offended, mm-hmm. and I'm and I'm going to crank this thing up to eleven. Until you move, you have to move. I need to see yeah. some kind of an apology, mm-hmm. and and no one's ever accepted any of my apologies online. Like mm-hmm. they just never, it never changed or made things yeah. better. It only they use it, they see it as a sign of weakness, just to drive the knife in you a little deeper. It's mm-hmm. like they they yeah. want to pull an apology out of you to double the dog pile. Yeah, yeah. Once so you get that comment, and someone's like, "I am done with your comic because I'm just sick of such as this and this and this," or like. Whatever it is they say, <laughs> it's always like this big threat. Like I, I need to like come crawling back. Oh, I, please, I, I, I even I'm got that. Change it for you. <laughs> I got that on Kickstarter. Even yeah. I got that. I go. I I was going to spend all this money on your book, but then I saw what your politics are, so <laughs> I'll be taking my donation back. And so I wrote him back. <laughs> then I said, "What kind of a person would you think I was if I changed my politics just to get your donation?" Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean isn't that like the peak of gross? You should love me for just for you know. I had a similar comment. Um, I don't even remember what it was, but it was after I, re- I think it was my first Kickstarter. Someone wrote me and was like, "You know, what is your like? What is what are you trying to say? What is the?" purpose of your book and like what does it mean yeah. because I don't know yeah. if I want to support it unless I fully know what yeah. you're, what it's what it's about <laughs> yeah, the what? and and in my mind I was just like so you do this with every movie you go to yeah, yeah. like you can't go to do you can't do anything because there's always going to be something you don't support about everything you do yeah. you know yeah I got a, I literally got an email like that from a fan that said I need you to lay out your exact stances yeah. on these issues 
Yeah. It was Otherwise, I'm just not going to buy anything you make yeah. until you tell me these things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was a and lot said, of what I got on on Radfist because Radfist is obviously just. And this, this. is an axe cop. Wait. Yeah. Oh my God. Can I ask something? What? Uh. Why do these people think that they them individually is that important? Yeah. <laughs> That's the I, big I thing. just don't get it. I don't understand why they think that <coughs> they are yeah. so important that yeah. they need to tell you that yeah. that you're going to affect yeah. this that yeah. they are going to affect the sale so bad. It's mm-hmm. it's, like, it's in really? the age of boycotts we have found that we 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 see our money as doing different things. So that now money isn't just something that you buy an object with. Now it's you're mm-hmm. casting a vote with yeah. your money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now it's like before you, I cast my vote because I don't want anyone or you or the industry or the universe mm-hmm. to think that I'm endorsing this thing with my money, mm-hmm. even though I'll buy, you know, whiskey from an axe murderer. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just like, I don't ask where I get my, <laughs> my or any rock star I've ever bought I music love from. Scotch. Yeah. If you brought yeah. music from a, a a band in the '70s, I mean, they're all drug addict, you know, yeah. monsters or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the, yeah. and so I never would think to, to ask that. <laughs> but they're trying to manipulate you with their money instead of just buy your product. I'm yeah. going to just buy my product, and I'm not going to. Yeah. I don't. I never you take this like as it, an endorsement. Or the oppressive yeah. dictators that are on their shirts. <laughs> yeah. If you don't like it, you can burn it. You can. Give, uh-huh. Throw it, you know. I just, I, don't, it. I don't even take the money that, it, that when I'm making a ton of money. I don't take that as an endorsement of who I am or whatever. I, mean. I still think like to God, all this is probably really irrelevant or harmful, if anything. Mm-hmm. And so it's not even then. It's, I don't see it as a good. Mm-hmm. I don't see our TV and our movies and stuff mm-hmm. as people spending money on going like, oh, in the history of man, this will be seen as something good. I see it as incredibly neutral. And you bought. Madagascar 3 and it yeah. didn't change the world or you didn't yeah. buy it and it didn't change the world yeah. so I'm not and I'm not trying to say that like no one has influence anywhere yeah. I'm only saying we're putting too much mm-hmm. say mm-hmm. in this monetary vote whereas you know I'll eat at McDonald's and it's not making a statement and I won't eat McDonald's another day and it's not making a statement so they're not going to ever pull this statement out once your guide finds out what you believe and what you don't believe. It's like, dude, if you like the book, buy it. Yeah. And if you regret having bought it, like I regret like the messaging and about 90% of what I <laughs> buy and what my children watch, then yeah. you just you regret it and you, and you don't buy it next time. I think it would be almost like, because for us, we're used to like, we're, I mean, we're used to just like going, obviously I probably don't agree with the guy that made this book. But yeah good artist and yeah. we're going to buy this <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's almost I don't know if it's like uh, if it works or not but like think of like a Christian bookstore yeah and like they start mm. maybe you get a new author in there that like maybe he he's not a Christian yeah and they start going like what are your beliefs here we want to like figure yeah. out this is, we have a certain way that we want the certain belief system we want to be portrayed here and yeah. if you're not going with that belief system we need to boot you out of here yeah yeah and yeah. that's what it feels like in the comics industry like yeah. you yeah. get this this like these litmus tests from yeah. people like well there's a certain way that we want comic artists and like the comic industry yeah. to believe and think and yeah. well, you know with that then like we need to get you out because yeah it and, makes and, it like a religion yeah. and it's it is it almost seems like the more you know crazy like you get with your comics the less the the less there is of that like yeah. people don't like oh it doesn't matter if, if it has all yeah the more offensive in it, it is yeah. but if you start narrowing it down to like this is kid friendly and it has these morals or these beliefs attached to it that's I yeah. think is good like oh yeah. that's that offends I do me. think yeah uh, if you made a comic about like you know like orgies with like yeah. anthropomorphic animals yeah. mm-hmm. which there are people is young. Them. Yeah. You make those a comic, are, are a comic in support of like celibacy. <laughs> People would like be irate. Yeah. Yeah. How dare you? Yeah. 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 And they'll waste their time boycotting your boycotting book. streaming. Yeah, you're trying to entire industry sexually. that is just like uh-huh. you know, you can just find furry stuff that just flat out endorses rape, and you're just going, <laughs> yeah, boycott me because because I'm a Republican, very smart. Yeah. And you realize these people, they must live such a such a sheltered life. That they've never read, you know, the material outside uh-huh. the worldview that they're even protective, like going, I can't even accidentally buy this thing. So tell me what the end game is on this, this, and this. Yeah. And I just kind of thought, you know, 
Rockfist is not a screed by any means. It certainly tilts right or whatever, but it's not, you know, you're going to have a lot of fun. I mean, this is mm-hmm. a funny, goofed up, <laughs> a, a take on politics I've, ta- politics I've never seen anything like it in comics. And they demand like, no, it must go within the right grooves. And they're going to tell me as their face is completely pierced up and tatted up and tell me how they just think outside the box. <laughs> and like, and I'm like, you know, but you like totally manicure your box like every second of your day. You will not allow my, me in there or my people in there or anything that I stand for any, any even any jokes. You wouldn't let me like crack a joke in your box. <laughs> Okay. I thought the funniest part, Rat Fist. <laughs> this, is, this is what I was laughing about when you were talking. Uh, is that when Rat Fist comes and knocks out the furries. And yeah. He's like, you're sick. What's wrong with you? Yeah. And he, his head falls off. He's this old man. Yeah. Oh, I, was, I was dying with that. But the, I think the comments just lit up on that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was like, asking for it. I, I had like this giant like, furry backlash. Hello, internet. <laughs> yeah. And I started even getting people that would they would write me endorsing the comic, saying, "Yeah, furries are just terrible. Yeah, they kick like, them in the teeth, and, yeah. and they're not even oh, human." And I'm going like, "Well, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, you know, that's not what I'm saying either. You know, I'm not." They're going, "Yeah, Doug, you nailed it." Like, no, no, that's not what. Hold on, that's not that's what, what I was saying. With the Jesus comic. Yeah, that was what made me realize, like, where I have to watch my. To clue them in on the Jesus comic, Ethan did a comic. I did a comic, uh, yeah, with a friend of mine. It was more his project, but I jumped on board and helped write it and stuff, but it was really irreverent, and I think I was coming from this perspective at the time. I was a Christian at the time, but I was kind of this perspective that, like, you know, the nothing sacred sense of humor perspective, like the South Park perspective. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, and thinking I could make this great point. I'll make fun of my own. I'll make fun of my own. Yeah, like, I'll make fun of my religion. Like, if you read Chumble Spuzz, like, I don't Mm. quite regret the, I don't really, you know, it's still messy, but, like, I like poking fun at my religion, and like, yeah, and other beliefs. And I think it's great. Like, I think a lot of uh, a lot of Christians like Chumble Spuds. Like, I get that all the time. Mm-hmm. But Jesus, the Jesus comic, big time got like this. People that they because they didn't know my beliefs, they mm. were at, they were like high fiving me for like crapping on Christianity. Mm. Going, yeah, you made fun of all yeah. of these and conservative like, say, dummies. You're like, wait, yeah. that's my entire family. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dumb, huh? Yeah. No, no, no. I love them. <laughs> yeah, every time someone says family. something mean about soccer moms, I'm like, I really know some soccer moms I really love. They're yeah. great people. I'm a soccer mom. <laughs> and then we got a soccer mom right here. Represent. Yeah. A new soccer mom. I'm new to soccer mom. Yeah, we, we played soccer this year the first time, so my <clears throat> wife has become a soccer mom. <laughs> and all of my friends and comics make my fun fiance of them be a soccer and mom excoriate them for time. driving I, a minivan, and she drives a minivan. They're like, all minivan women. We'll see. They should all fall off the world and die. I'm sorry. Cause... I will not do the minivan thing. <laughs> I just have to say. We'll have to get but some, you have a little bit more kids. We'll have to get some more kids going. And no, well, if you talk to that one right no there. No comment. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get real personal we now to, on this. You don't need to go there. <laughs> Makingcomics.com. Now you, yeah. <laughs> now you see why I get into trouble on my comment section. You so just go straight to the holy of holies and there's no, I have this lack of personal space problem. I think one of the things with the comment section kind of going in a different direction now in, the, uh, in what we're talking about a bit, but like staying on comments, I think one thing that happens is like a story gets released at one page a week. Yeah. And there's like a tension that usually builds like when you're watching a movie or like mm-hmm. reading a book and you're going, this mm-hmm. character is getting annoying and then they mm-hmm. change or something happens. Like mm-hmm. when you're releasing a page a week and you're watching everybody scrutinize each page and scrutinize like the slow change <laughs> of the characters, yeah. it's just like... It's almost like not healthy. Yeah. <laughs> but then at the same time, like, I don't know, like, I, lo- I love ha- making my website interactive and I like the community yeah. that it builds yeah. and stuff. So it's like this tough balance. So yeah. like, I do like the slow is. bleed of webcomics. So Newt's is doing one page a week. Mm-hmm. And um, the people, they they have to, they read it and now they can only relish a page. Yeah. Hmm. And so I have like, like for the last four or five weeks or whatever it is, it's had nothing but characters like dying off. <laughs> and so their comments are just like I cried or like uh, this is brutal it's only five pages but because they're watching over five <laughs> weeks that's all they've known yeah. whereas when they read the graphic novel they're like oh dark through, flip, yeah. flip dark oh yeah, this is that's tough dark. and then they'll get right to the funny you know stuff again yeah. 
So I kind of like that slow pace mm -hmm. where they have to really hang on that moment. I think yeah. you just take self control as the creator not to get in there and be like, it's gonna change. He's gonna yeah. he's gonna come around. Like he's yeah. gonna hold on. It's coming. I, I I've always argued that that's kind of one of the powerful things about comic web comics mm -hmm. is that people can grow up with, with yeah. that story a part of them weekly. Yeah. You know, they're thinking about it weekly as mm -hmm. they you know if you start out when you're 15 or 12 yeah. and you read a web comic for two years. I mean that that's a big in part of your life, big influence. I just hate the web comic not being on paper. I'm still yeah. just a. It just doesn't feel. You're a yeah. brick and mortar kind of guy. Yeah, it just doesn't. F <laughs> it, there's a romance to books, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. A tree died. Yeah, the tree died. <laughs> oh for no! You can't, you can't he gave, he gave he gave his life for your story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I love books way more than I could ever love web comics, you know, too. Mm -hmm. but, but there's that interaction, like you're saying, that's just. It, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. Or look at the order of the stick. I mean, it's a web comic that he yeah. puts out a Kickstarter of the book. It's like millions. It's yeah. Like, see, people like books. I mean, the, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> like you keep hearing the message over and over again, and we keep denying. Going, people keep telling me this whole yeah. web digital thing is all the readers. That's the way it's going to go, right? And then you throw some real book in front of them, and they're buying the book. Yeah. Yeah. But they never would have bought the book if they hadn't read it on the web first. Yeah, so it's true. just like they complement yeah. each other. Yeah, exactly. It it goes hand in hand, I think now. Yeah. So, what's your future plans with Newts? Are you are you got a Scholastic book deal with him? Kind of? uh, I don't have an official book deal with him yet, okay, but I'm. Edit I'm, that out. No, no, <laughs> you, you, no. We can talk. Okay, okay. this is an open talk, so. Um. The comic's going to go on hiatus next month because mm. we got to do some catching up. Mm -hmm. um, Catherine is co is just wrapping up the coloring of uh, of, of uh, Tommy Source Rex, oh, which okay. we're re-releasing next year through Scholastic. In, in color, wow. Okay. In color, and that's I added great. 33 new pages. It's going to be hardbound and a lot of stuff. Oh, that's nice. Very and cool. then, and then, I'm the next book I'm going to do is Newts. Whether if Scholastic publishes it or not, I'm finishing news. Mm. So I'm 100 pages into the first graphic novel. I probably need to do about another 100 pages, I'm guessing. So I have to wrap that up by the beginning of next year. Mm. And then I'll probably work on some Hicks and Bragg, put another dent in that, come 100 pages into that. Okay. And that's going to be at least 200 pages. And then I'm going to do, for the first time, I'm going to go in and do a sequel of news. Which I've never done a sequel of my books before, so yeah. there will be a Newt's book two and three. And what I'm doing is, after I get this first, um, probably fifty pages of Newt's done and in color, mm -hmm. I'm presenting them to Scholastic first quarter next year. Oh, okay. And they've kind of given me a verbal of they really want to want this, even book. though it's a, a web comic. Oh yeah. So does that would. It didn't Was with them. A, it doesn't. I, that surprised them. me. No, it didn't with them. They they really saw it as they're going like, look, I I don't see this book having a huge crossover with yeah. selling your book to fifth graders. Yeah. You know how many of those guys are going to lose by doing a web comic? So they really, yeah. and it really is. If you think about the web comic market, it is a completely different market yeah. than mm -hmm. what Scholastic is selling yeah. into. So what threat is it to them? Yeah, it might be a bigger threat to image or something but even yeah. then yeah webcomic buyers like the ones that are watching reading pvp or the other ones they're not that as big on books those mm -hmm. are web comic people yeah i mean questionable content those are web comic people yeah i think so. I, sure it's probably true that like a small percentage of your audience on the web actually buys your book but it's still the the amount of people that are going to buy your book if you just print it out in paper and put it in a store it's still mm -hmm. going to be a much smaller audience so mm -hmm. you're still going to you know expand your audience and like yeah. if your audience is like you know 10 times bigger than it is if it's just on paper like your yeah. web comic audience is 10, 10 times bigger than say one tenth of your audience actually buys your book then yeah 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 and, and the web comic business i still don't understand or or excel at or you know what mm -hmm. i mean I'm, I still feel like the web comic art audience is, it's neat and I, I like them and I'm dabbling with them, you know, yeah. on these projects now and, I, and I'll always, you know, pursue mm -hmm. them because I look at them as a block. Mm 
Yeah. But I just don't, I don't know what makes them tick in a way that I know why people pick up a book of mine. Mm. So the, and, and to me, they're two different businesses. Yeah. And so the fact that my web comics are not in and of themselves profitable, mm -hmm. I just don't see them as anything more than a hobby to me. They're mm. not a business, they're a hobby. And you, and you notice I, I never, I don't put banner ads up and things like yeah. that. I just yeah. kinda, I'm, I'm still feeling out to feel the audience because I can't believe it. I attract a bigger audience if I put up banner ads. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Maybe, maybe that's what they need. So well, I think I'm gonna not do banner yeah. ads and all. I, I'm gonna keep mine very clutter free yeah. for my next one because I don't know, I didn't do as much as I wanted yeah. to. And that's what I like better is I like when kind of the whole page is a package mm -hmm. that is a, a an expression of something. And, yeah. Uh, and it, it, I think it's also different with Axe Cop, where the the style of the thing is kind of it feels more like a web comic banner ad mm -hmm. cross culture thing is going on. So louder makes sense. If you're doing yeah. some watercolor, you yeah. know, Chinese Long ink thing, and then you have a bunch of banner ads and all this stuff, yeah. I just that doesn't make sense. Yeah, Skeksis. Doug's trying on jewelry. <laughs> yeah, he's already see. bought one they pair. Look at that. How much is that? Uh, like ten dollars. <laughs> now where am I gonna? Like, <laughs> I gotta have you guys wait, over more often. But wait, wait, let me. But show wait, you. now how much? No, no, let me show you this one. Oh, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I'll wait. I'll wait until this is all done. Okay, wait. what's your email? I'm signed in. Yeah, I'm trying to send says, money. It what's it say? The error is. Is your phone on? <laughs> See, just sorry, an error occurred. So Ethan. Yes. Uh, I heard you were on Carson Daly. <laughs> oh, God. You didn't watch it because it was on at like 2 in the morning. Well, th was there two different things? Because there was something on uh, uh, on YouTube or something where it was like a little edited video. Yeah, that's of, what it was. Oh, that's, that's people, when you, people think... I think Carson Daly's show has kind of changed its format now. It's not like a Tonight Show kind of thing. Okay. I think he does do one live interview each show, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do this thing called Spotlight on their show. Where yeah. they, and that was what I was, that. so... Yeah. It was a. It was. I've actually did it twice. Like I went to Meltdown Comics about six months ago, or probably three or four months ago, and they interviewed me like for like they're like you know three cameras on me and all these lights and stuff and like asked me a bunch of questions and they edited this thing and then I lost all the footage <laughs> and then they had me come back and they scheduled that me and Malachi come in to like interview because like, Malachi was gonna be in town uh -huh. and then like last minute like they freaked out because they didn't have uh, their lawyers and they'd never worked with a minor before uh -huh. so like. Okay. So then they said we were not gonna we'll wait. Kid so then we minutes. waited for yeah. So no Malachi. So then like after Malachi went home, I did the, the interview. Mm -hmm. So then they just yeah they edited that out and it was it turned out really good. I mean it's like a yeah. good presentation of Axe yeah. Cop and it was really neat. I think they did really good. Yeah. Did Did you see any increase in traffic or None. exposure? <laughs> <laughs> or book sales? Yeah, I was curious. I was like looking so at the day that it went up, but yeah, I mean it might. I think that, you know, the way that things are now, like, people don't watch stuff when it's on. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and I think that it's more like, uh, they put those videos online, like, about a week later, so it'll be interesting mm -hmm. when it's actually yeah. a video that's online, it might mm -hmm. yeah. get a little, seen a little bit more, but, I don't know. It was, I, I guess I wasn't too shocked, because, like, I was, we were on CNN a while back, mm. just a little thing like that, too, on CNN, okay. and didn't it didn't really that. spike our numbers either. Hmm. You would think that if you're on TV... Yeah, you, on, yeah. People. You just think on TV you're yeah. rich. Yeah, <laughs> the moment you're on TV, money falls you, you from the roof. You made a hundred thousand sales. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, we have, you know, there was motion comics that got made by some fans, kind of grouped up with mm -hmm. me. We made four motion comics. The company called Six Point Harness, that's uh, an animation studio here, and um, they're starting a channel called Rugburn. They're ba they basically have turned like the first like twenty or thirty episodes of Axe Cop in motion comics. Okay, wow. So it's all word for word. It's like all faithful to the comics. So like the TV show is going to be reformatted and you know stories will be different and yeah. changed a bit. But this is going to be like the comics come to life. The mouths wow. are going to move. It's like good, really well timed. Like yeah. it's my drawings, but it's animated. It's really <laughs> so they've been just that's working on cool. it for, for yeah, a long they've been time. working on it for a while and they're really good. Um, and then the other mm -hmm. thing is the uh, Axe Cop documentary that's going to be getting made here. Um, they've been following me around for like two years. They've been yeah. out to see me and Malachi out in Washington where Malachi yeah. lives. And they've been to my hometown. And we've been over to like New York. And she's been all yeah. in San Diego Comic-Con. She went to our first book signing we ever did together. So how, where's the 
documentary going to end in at all? Is it just well, basically the funny thing is, the for the longest time, show? she's like, I don't have an ending. I don't have an ending. And she kept saying to me, I need you to get a TV show or get married. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> or die. Yeah. Yeah, 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 or die. That's what all documentary filmmakers say. You have to cut it off at some point. And so I think she's ready to cut it off. Yeah. <laughs> so the fun. wedding could be the end. Yeah, right, of the documentary. Well, she said that's her. Yeah, she said that's her. I don't know if I'm giving away the ending. Be pre- oh yeah, she Sorry. said that was like her dream. Oh no, you guys have a kid, credits. and then and you, a light bulb appears. Well, that's the and then that's the end because you have a new a new <laughs> yeah I got my new start for a new story. My new cash cow. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, thanks. Nice. This was a blast. We Thank made, you. Made jewelry and made sales and talked about comics. Hey guys, this is Jason Brubaker again. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm, I, I guess I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed about this last episode because it wasn't until Adam came to me and said, "Hey, you know, we're approaching the last of the reissues," that I realized that I, I had never released this last episode. And uh, man, I, I got an email. I got to call up Doug and Ethan and apologize for that because. I know they had some information in here they wanted to get out before <laughs> before years had passed. Um, but, wow, things have been, like, I, I guess I would just say my life went through a huge roller coaster of events um, since this episode, and uh, so much has changed. Um, and I, I'm sure most of you guys know, but I've, I've quit DreamWorks the, the end of December. Uh, last year, which is 2014, um, and I moved to Idaho just a couple, like a month ago. I I, I have I'm renting a little studio space in downtown Pocatello, where I grew up, and and I am starting to make comics uh, full time now. Um, yeah, full time. I mean, just like you know, when I started this podcast, I was dreaming about this moment. And now it's real. I, so it, it's bizarre. And um, all I can do is thank people. I mean, you know, everybody who's backed me on Kickstarter, everyone who's followed this podcast, everyone who's uh, commented and supported people on Patreon now. So I just thank you guys. I mean, I, I don't know how else to end this other than thank you so much. I mean, I cannot wait to see what the years ahead are um, now that I can just sit down in the studio and churn out the comics. And um, I know that so many people listening to this podcast are kind of in that same boat that that uh, that I talked about at the very beginning. It's just like, I'm in the day job. I'm just trying to figure out how to make these comics work and pay the bills. And I can tell you now like straight up that it is possible and it's just it's insane <laughs> it's insane to think that it is possible but uh the internet has made this possible and i think if you just have the faith i think anything's possible so uh, uh yeah so go for it <laughs> but um i'd love your support if you uh are interested go to patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com backslash Jason Brubaker and um, you can see uh, what's going on there. I'm going to be releasing tons and tons of behind the scenes stuff for Sithra Book 2 um, starting this month and I am um, also going to start publishing Sithra on Webtoon where webtoons dot com which is a, a website that uh, that uh, they want to pay me a little bit of money every month to to host my webcomic on their site. I, I guess I'm just tripping out because just this whole move to Idaho is tripping me out. Um, things are amazing, and and I can't wait to see what happens next. So just so you guys know, I, I also keep threatening Adam uh, that I'm going to call up some more artists and, and have some conversations with them. Um, and he's, uh, he says, I'm more than welcome to do it. So if I can just sit down and do it and edit him, then, uh, Hey, we'll be golden. But you guys know me and you know that sometimes my editing takes two years plus to accomplish. 
So anyway, I should probably just sit down and stick with uh, making comics. But I'll try. I will try to uh, to to keep doing some of these um, making comics episodes. And uh, and I'll leave you at that. Thanks again, Adam, for taking over. And I'll see you guys around. Well, there you have it. That was the last episode of Making Comics, the podcast that I did. This one was recorded in 2012, and then I finally released it, what, 2015 or something like that. It's 2017 now. Basically, since this podcast has aired, um, it has changed hands. I gave Making Comics over to Patrick Urich, as you guys might have known, and Adam Greenfield has um, continued making these podcasts. If you want to hear more Making Comics podcasts, head over to makingcomics.com. They've continued this in uh, as a podcast called Making Comics Gutter Talk. Another thing you might be aware of, but if not, uh, I continued making new podcasts about a year ago or so, and they were called Coffee Table Comics Podcast, and they felt and sounded exactly like these Making Comics podcasts. And so you can find that playlist on my YouTube, Coffee Table Comics Podcast playlist. I'll, I'll try to link it below, um, as well as the Making Comics pay- playlist that, that I was responsible for. And um, but anyway, I, I think I'm probably uh, wrapping up my podcasting days. Uh, it's, it's been really fun to do them. And I always used it as an excuse to to talk to artists that I wanted to talk to and pick their brain. But a lot of these conversations uh, that I need to have now with people are conversations that need to be private. It's confidential information. So, you know, I'm finding more and more now, it's like, now I just I, I just need to call up people and talk to them one-on-one. So, you know, that that was my reasoning for doing these things is is to to learn from these people and try to to wrestle with what direction I should take. And I'm hoping that this archive of the Making Comics podcast and the Coffee Table Comics podcast can kind of give you guys give you guys that same thing to be able to wrestle with these decisions and figure out what's right for you. I think as I move forward, especially going into 2018, I'll be finished with Sithra. I'm going to probably be wrestling with new things like how to approach my next book. And so there's there's definitely going to be a lot of um, possibly behind the scenes content as I'm trying to figure out how to go forward with that. And I hope I'm hoping you guys would join me on that ride. So anyway, I really appreciate you guys being a part of this and hanging out and listening to all these, and I will keep them archived here on YouTube as long as possible. So that's it. So I have finally have all of the podcasts that I've ever recorded on YouTube. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.